then. All right, cool. <laughs> All right, cool. We're live. I'm recording. I'm with Ken from Moon. Uh, pumped about this episode. How are you with, how are you Ken today? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you. Really, really appreciate you having me on. Awesome. Awesome. You know, I normally just as like a level set, I, I, I start by where did we first meet? And, you know, some people are like, we met 10 years ago. Some people are like, we met a couple months ago. But in our case, uh, probably should let people know this is our first time meeting. We were introduced to some people on the Internet. And uh, and and now I think I'm on episode like 90 or something. So so more of that starting to happen, which I'm really happy about. And uh, so I get to meet, you know, interesting people like yourself. So let's, you know, I, we're obviously going to do like the, your story and everything, but just, you know, more um, recently I've been also kind of giving people kind of the elevator pitch or like the 30 seconds on, you know, the company as well. Right. Just so that uh, people know what's coming. Mm -hmm. So you want to talk a little bit about moon and then we'll go into the story of it maybe later on, but I uh, would we'll just kind of give people a big overview. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, moon's a, a payments platform that allows consumers to pay with crypto uh, pretty much anywhere online. So we've launched a browser plugin. You add it to your browser and you can go shop anywhere you'd like. Right now, it's just in the United States at e-commerce merchants. We allow you to purchase a uh, Visa prepaid card, and then you can use that prepaid card to complete your transaction. We have an integration with Coinbase, so you can pay with any of your Coinbase wallets. Interesting. And we're also integrated with the Lightning Network, so you can pretty much instantly send Bitcoin at extremely low fees to make uh, payments online. Very cool. Very cool. Wow. That's, that's, uh, that's awesome. Wait, so you said a couple of things. You said it was a, a, like a browser plugin. So like for Chrome or for all the different browsers, I assume. Yeah. So right now it's uh, the Chrome based browser. Chrome based so Chrome, browser. Got it. Brave edge. Oh, uh, we're working on support for Firefox and Safari. Nice. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and then it's, and, and, and it's like, you said a, a payments thing. So we'll, let's get into it more later, but that sounds fascinating. Yeah. Lightning enabled. Very, very interesting. Cool. Okay. So, so I always say that, you know, like Bitcoin, it's just like ones and zeros. I mean, it's just more about like the people and their kind of stories that really fascinate me. I've been in this space since 2011 and done a lot of stuff, but recently, like I said, I've been on a, a bit of a trip, you know, trying to like, uh, just ask people about their stories and not like the, you know, elevator pitch story, but more like, you know, like, what's your story? Sure, <laughs> so let's sure, start there. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I think my, my Bitcoin journey started um, through Reddit. I think hmm. that that may be the case for a lot of folks. Like I'm an, I'm an engineer uh, by, by training and, you know, I studied computer science and I was an engineer at Lockheed Martin. Uh, but cool. really what got me to Bitcoin, I was browsing, browsing Reddit late at night back in 2010. Um, Where, whereabouts was, in the world are you? Are you are you in the I'm, United States? Yeah, yeah, I'm in New York. Cool. Okay. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I just I was pretty early on Reddit, totally obsessed, just love just reading. Back then, it was so many tech folks on there, and heard about Bitcoin. And unfortunately, I didn't get I didn't buy any Bitcoin until a few years later. Right. Big, biggest mistake of my life. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Everyone says the same thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Um, so, you know, that's how, that's how I really first got into it. Um, 2013, that is when I first bought Bitcoin on Mt. Gox. Now I'm wrapped up in this Mt. Gox class action lawsuit. So that's a ton of fun. I get a lot of mail from Japan now. Uh, <laughs> okay. so, uh, I, I, have a, I have a close friend of mine, Antoine, who I've also interviewed. He's, uh, he, he's, he's in that list, unfortunately, yeah. or yeah, hopefully soon, fortunately. <laughs> yeah. 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 Something, yeah, you know, yeah. <clears throat> an interesting thing about the, mm. the Mount Gox situation. Yeah. My yeah. favorite part about it was that most people I don't think realized was that someone actually set up an impromptu exchange on Mount Gox. So when Mt. Gox initially announced they had trouble, yeah, um, they you could send Bitcoin within the Mt. Gox ecosystem from account to account, mm. but you couldn't send it off platform. So somebody set up an exchange where you could trade your trapped Bitcoin for free Bitcoin. Interesting. And it would transfer between the accounts. So then they set up this exchange rate that just kind of you know, market-driven forces set up this exchange rate. Hmm. And it pretty much was like almost like a prediction market whether or not Mt. Gox was solvent and you'd ever be able to get your coins out. So I was lucky. I actually, I traded at, you know, some probably two to one ratio to get most of my Bitcoin out. And the rest that I'm in this 
this lawsuit about is really just the rounding error. Um, cool. It's like half a Bitcoin because it was like back then that wasn't really worth a whole lot. Huh. So uh, that was that, that was my favorite part about it because someone set up this exchange and it was the sketchiest thing. It was like three input fields on a totally blank white website. And just you just had to trust people on Reddit that said like, this is legit and it's not going to steal your money. So that's, was, that's crazy. That's crazy. Uh, well, I'm just curious. So you said you got in, that's pretty early. Cause like most people I talk to, they don't, they don't say 2013 or whatever. Um, but curious, what did the New York scene look like back then? Like, I, cause I just remember people on like uh, in these big rooms, you know, sure. reading out prices and stuff like that. Well, what, what was that like? That's the thing. I wasn't involved with any in-person stuff whatsoever. I was ah, purely online. online. Got it. Yeah, got so it. I Probably like most joined. people, right? Yeah. Probably like a lot of people out there. <laughs> it's just yeah, online. I think most yeah, yeah, people, yeah. it was an mm. online thing, you know. Um, you know, for me, I didn't start getting involved with actually going to conferences and meeting people mm. until 2018. Uh, first conference I went to was in Vegas. Uh, just flew out there. I was just starting to think about building a company in the space. And so I went to the conference, just kind of wanted to feel things out. Mm. And then, and then I just started going to as many as I possibly could. And start meeting people, and that that has been a very cool experience. So, and, and what and you said Lockheed Martin, what were you doing there? There, if you don't mind me asking. Yeah, so so I worked on the USS Ohio class submarine, uh, primarily Whoa. on their navigation system. Mm. So I have a big background in inertial sensors and the software and algorithms around inertial sensors. So pretty much all the sensors, accelerometers, gyroscopes that are in your phone. Uh, nuclear submarines also have these, but on a much larger scale that are far mm. more accurate. So think of a, a gyroscope that's this big, an accelerometer that's this big. And, uh, you know, so, some really cool technology uh, that I got to work on there. That is that is neat. That is neat. I spent almost eight years in robotics. Um, and so oh, yeah. anyway, so yeah, so I definitely know what you mean. Uh, we, so we actually sold uh, like high end things in fact one of our our craziest was this like gyroscope it was like literally a 3d or yeah 3d gyroscope that was like that would sit on your you know your research desk and you could like you know hook it up to like matlab and simulink and mm -hmm. and like tweak you know your parameters and your controller algorithms and like in real time kind of see what was going on it was super cool um but anyway so that's fascinating that's fascinating so so what what got so bitcoin kind of came into your radar through the internet you said reddit and then and then what, what what's kind of the next big i guess milestone yeah so you know back in it was 2013 uh that's when i first started to get involved in bitcoin that was also uh -huh. i left lockheed to start uh my own business and I've been kind of starting businesses since then. Um, and every step of the way, I was like, I feel like I should do something in this Bitcoin space. You know, all my friends told me I was nuts. Everybody was, Ken, you're nuts. This thing's going to crash. You're wasting your time. And I kind of, I probably listened to them a little bit too much. Right. And then it was around 2018 when I really was like, you know what? This is something that I want to really go all in on. And I, uh, the big, one of the big motivations was seeing the price. We had that big run up in price 2018, but it's <laughs> yeah. not for what you think. It's not like, oh, I got to go get in on, on something that's hot right now. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was a terrible thing because mm. everyone's like, Ken, can you buy some Bitcoin for me? Everyone's grandma was saying, I want to get on this Bitcoin thing. And all I was saying <laughs> was this, people are going to, people's lives are going to get ruined, you know? Mm. And everybody's looking at Bitcoin and saying, it's about the price. Hmm. I want to invest. I want to get rich quick. And that's not what it's about for me. You know, what's about for me is financial freedom and financial empowerment and helping people. And I think that's what's really popular about uh, or really powerful about Bitcoin. And that's really exciting. Obviously, we need trading. Obviously, we need to have markets that hmm. set prices like that's extraordinarily important. But there's some, you know, it. it it supposes some level of utility, mm. right? Um, you could say, hey, it's great as, as, as a store of value. Yes, you know, and it's, uh, it's great to, you know, you can trade it and make some money off it, fantastic. But, you know, there's plenty of things that have limited supply, right? You know, mm. there has to be some underlying utility. And I think one of the keys to that is getting people to use it as a medium of exchange. And um, I know that's become less and less popular over time, but I'm I'm a big believer in it. Uh, so. Well, let's talk about it because I I'm I'm I 
I agree with you, uh, I think, more and more. But it, it is a contrarian belief in itself because I think Bitcoin is just like, why would you ever sell Bitcoin? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, life. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, and, and I, I actually think it's, it's, it actually enables what most Bitcoiners want, which is like to be able to go all in. <laughs> anyways but 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 okay so but but okay to your story though so okay so one by the way one of my kind of main themes um is 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 that is that it's not about the price is that the price is the least exciting thing about bitcoin is that it's yeah. about building on bitcoin and if you look at all my whatever almost a hundred that's pretty crazy i started this three months ago eh? i'm on like episode 100 which is pretty crazy yeah. um but everyone is like a different look at like whether you're an author or a professor or a you know whatever like an entrepreneur uh, most of them are entrepreneurs is like how do you how do you okay, you, you kind of sense that there's an opportunity. You see that there's maybe a market gap, even though most people maybe don't agree with you. Um, but how do you take that next step then? And, and, you know, and kind of, I don't know, embark on that journey, especially if yeah. you're not going to meet with people, right? Because you said that wasn't a big part of it or physical. Yeah. Uh, yeah, curious. Yeah, so I think, I mean, I honestly think that's the great thing about Bitcoin is that it is a decentralized platform. It mm. is something that you can just go on to a forum. I mean, even Satoshi, we don't know who he is. No one's necessarily met him in person at a conference, right? Uh, people are building things on Bitcoin. You don't know them. You don't have to know them. It's a trustless system, right? You don't have to go to a conference and shake hands and make deals and sign contracts, right? Like there's obviously you do that, you know, you're building companies and stuff, right? But you don't have to. If you're building on top of this, of this decentralized network, you can kind of do whatever you want. Right. right? It's permissionless so, as well, right? Exactly. I guess, it's uh, permissionless. Mm, yep. mm, mm, beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So continue, continue. That's a, did you say you had financial experience or was it just like the Lockheed and kind of were you coming so, in more from like an engineering? Kind of yeah. Technical? So yeah, yeah. I actually, I did study financial engineering also. So Interesting. I just I, Interesting. I went to grad school at Columbia, study financial engineering. Oh, crazy. Wow. All about okay. Traditional finance, hmm. you know, deriving black shoals, all the mathematics behind derivatives. And wow. uh, okay. never went into finance professionally besides working at Bitcoin now. Hmm. Uh, it was really just a combination of my interests, computer science, math, economics, finance. Um, Fascinating. And, okay. Okay. So, so, okay. So I'm fascinated here. So what, what happens then next uh, in your journey? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I did that in grad school. I did that part-time while I was at Lockheed. And, you know, the big thing I kind of learned was like, you know, a lot of this stuff's BS that that's happening on wall street, you know, and I don't, actually want to go work there you know yeah. but it was a great education uh and i kind of you know it did somewhat actually tie into my work at lockheed in, in sensor systems because it uh if you look at time series data right uh, financial time series is is the exact same type of data as sensor data which is also time series data so hmm. you can use a lot of the same techniques on hmm. on both things and uh, eventually one of the companies i I started was a uh, sensor company where we did machine learning on wearables um, in order to detect gestures, right? So if you had a smartwatch on your wrist and uh, we could detect not just say your steps, but also like a bench press, squat, lunge, jumping jack. And then we patented this technology that I came up with that allowed us to do uh, machine learning on your smartwatch. And we did that before the Apple watch came out. Um, and it was pretty neat. You know, you could go to the gym and it would detect your exercises over time. And in theory, someone could use our platform to uh, create some kind of AI personal trainer because it would know what you were doing as you were doing it in real time. Hmm. But uh, but that kind of flopped. We found out people working out at the gym didn't really want to wear an Apple watch. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I also had a realization that they call hardware hardware because it's hard. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. You have to think about you know logistics mm -hmm. and like warehouse and shipping and you know repair and yep. oh my god, uh, yeah, atoms are way harder than uh, you know uh, ones and zeros. <laughs> yeah. And it's something, especially you know, like China's China's killing it on the hardware side. Mm. You know, you go to Shenzhen, like that is you know China's hardware, the U.S. is software. You got Shenzhen, you got Silicon Valley, um, and it's interesting. Isn't that might that change again. I mean, I, I find it like, I find it a bit, uh, what's the word, uh, a little sad at being like someone that's Canadian and, you know, mm -hmm. married, my, my wife's a mechatronics engineer that we've just sure. kind of given up. Do you think there might be like a renaissance with like robotics I, and all that? It's I probably a bit out there. <laughs> I do hope so. It's just a matter mm. of the cost, right? And I mm. think there's a lot of that lack of expertise, you know, mm. you go to Shenzhen and it just seems so common. Everybody understands hardware. 
It's right. like going to the valley and everybody, how everybody understand. Oh, everyone's a coder. It was this, you know, you go to Shenzhen and it's like everybody had, everyone's connected with people at 17 different factories and fab shops. And right. it's like, <laughs> I don't know. I really, you know, I, I've gone to Shenzhen. I've done some manufacturing type things over there, but I barely understand what's happening. You know, that's yeah. so outside my, my wheelhouse. And mm. I don't know a whole that, you know, too many people in the U S who, who have that, they just go to China and that's it, you know? Mm. Uh, so I would Anyways, love it. Yeah. Yeah. But sorry, back to your, back to your story though. Okay. So yeah. So you, so, okay. So then what, what come, what happens next? Yeah. So uh, let's see Sen- sensor thing that, that failed. I then I did a uh, software consulting company where I helped venture back startups in New York, build out their products. I was uh, co-located with a uh, accelerator program in New York called Entrepreneurs Roundtable Accelerator, hmm. where I helped their portfolio companies, you know, just kind of build out their products whenever they needed help. Um, so, so that was pretty cool. Got to work in a lot of interesting uh, spaces. Built a dash cam. Uh, helped some shipping logistics stuff. Um, what else was there? Just wherever I could help, insurance, platform, you know, just, and I got to learn about a lot of different uh, industries, which is pretty neat. Uh, And then that's where I wound down to start up Moon. Because I was like, you know, I don't want to necessarily do the consulting thing. I want to really build something big in in a space that I'm very passionate about. Interesting. And when when around did you come up with this idea of of launching Moon? Yeah, so it was in, you know, end of 2018, just about. Okay, so you guys have been at it for what three three years now? Just yeah, over almost that? Almost three years. Ago. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so what, what like I mean, I know a lot of people that's like, oh, they gotta find a co-founder or something, or mm-hmm. were you just like, okay, I'm just gonna go build the MVP because I can code and I get enough of this stuff? Or like how did you yeah, how so, did you kind of get kickstarted? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so had this idea, mm-hmm. you know, while I had my uh, consulting company, mm-hmm. I had an intern and me and my intern, we kind of worked on it a little bit. And then I was like, you know, let's spin this thing off. And he helped, he helped us out for about two months. Hmm. He was a he was an exchange student from Singapore. So he ended up going back to Singapore. Hmm. Uh, and then, you know, I just kind of took over from there, you know, and just kept building for the last two years. Um, initially, 2019, we actually launched the product for the first time. Mm-hmm. So our launch this week was not the first time we were live. Uh, back in 2019, we had... Um, uh, we allowed people to shop on Amazon with mm. Bitcoin. And the same thing with the Coinbase integration, with the Lightning Network integration, but it was exclusively on Amazon. And the way we facilitated the transactions was um, you know, more, much more behind the scenes than what we do these days. Um, so what we did is we kind of, over the past year, rebuilt this from the ground up so now you can shop anywhere that Visa is accepted. Oh, okay. Sorry. Hold on. So, free, but your MVP was like a, a window into Amazon where I could spend yeah. my Bitcoin. So, so it was, you Is install the extension. Yeah. yeah. You, you install this extension. Uh-huh, you go uh-huh. shop on Amazon just oh, like normal. Interesting. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Once you're at the Amazon checkout screen, you'd see a button pay with moon and you right. click the button, and now you have all your crypto payments options. So you can pay with Bitcoin that's on your Coinbase account. You can scan a lightning invoice to complete your transaction with lightning and you just seamlessly complete your your amazon purchase and that was that was pretty huge you know we got front page of coindesk front page of TechCrunch. it was it was a big deal at the time everybody, everybody loved it um so so that was a pretty cool experience okay um, okay i'm just okay anyway so that that's awesome <laughs> yeah. so okay and then now you can you can buy Anywhere Visa is accepted. So, so what does that mean? So anywhere where Visa is accepted online, I can essentially pay with Bitcoin now is what you're saying? <clears throat> Except only in the US right now. So I know you're in Canada. I, I think my brain's going a little, uh, yeah, haywire. But, but even in the US, you're saying like, mm-hmm. you're saying that you can pay with Bitcoin anywhere Visa is accepted. So how does that, what? Yeah, so, <laughs> so it was uh, at the start of... Um, 2020, I ended, I called up Visa and I said, Hey, here's what we're building. Look, we did this thing on Amazon. Here's our vision. Right. And surprisingly, they were like, Hey, that sounds awesome. <laughs> I didn't expect such a great response. So, uh, so then we ended up part- partnering up with Visa and uh, Visa connected us with one of our, you know, who's now our partner bank. And, uh, you know, we spent pretty much all of 2020 integrating with the partner bank. 
so that we could launch our product. And now oh, I'm confused. So anywhere where I see, okay, I don't get it. So what's the flow like? Like, okay, so yeah, yeah. you explain the so, other one. So how do you? How yeah. Do you so here's how it works. It's very similar. You go to now you shop anywhere <laughs> oh, is online. This, is this real life? <laughs> like <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, so I can't believe so, I didn't hear this. Okay. So you, so you go you shop online. Yeah. Right? You have you have our plugin installed. Right? Yeah. You go to checkout page. You open up our our plugin, and you get a little bit of a sidebar, right? The sidebar. You click uh, create a card, and what we allow you to do is purchase a Visa prepaid card mm. with your Bitcoin, right? So if it's you I connect your you. Coinbase account, you can pay from Coinbase, and that's instant transaction. Boom! So hundred dollars of Bitcoin now you have a hundred dollar Visa card, and you can use that to complete your transaction. Same thing if it's Lightning Network, you say I want to create a card for. Yeah, I have a question. Do you like? Would it be weird to do screen share? Like, are you able to show it? Or, I can do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, just because, like, uh, yeah, I think I don't know. It'd just be awesome. I'll give you control here. Yeah, let me just. Uh... I don't know. I mean, if I'm putting you on the spot, we can we no, can do no, it I another time. Sure I, I can put it late. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take your time. Take your time. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, mm. But good on you. Wow. Like that, that stuff just makes me feel so good. And it's like, well, that's, Bitcoin that's, is here to stay, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing that's, that's most exciting to me mm. is, you know, really creating this utility and creating a product that is really what we want from, from Bitcoin. But how how long has this been product. possible? This, this, this thing that you just described. Uh, so we just launched this on uh, this past Tuesday. Ah, oh, okay. So, so there you go. So I'm not in that's the why I haven't heard about you, it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're just okay. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So this is like hot off the press. Exactly. Uh, insane. First, first podcast I've been on since. I oh, was my Lord, on. dude. This yeah. is too much. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm super pumped. This is insane. Like, this is what? Yeah. Huh. So here's what I'll do. Every day, there. every day, man. Bitcoin never ceases to, uh, you know, what, to amaze me. It's just like. More. More and more is happening these days, more than ever. And it's like, it's hit like some sort of inflection point where I don't even think one human can keep up. Oh, what's this? Oh, yeah. Well, like back in- Okay, back so in you're going to do this. Okay. If this doesn't work in my app, obviously, right? This is going to, I have to log in, right? Because I need the Chrome thing. Yeah, right. Like, right I, now, okay, okay. In, uh, it's Chrome, Brave, and uh, Edge. Got uh, you. But on my mobile, if I was using Chrome, could I do it or no? No. no right? So Chrome Mobile does not support browsers. Got you. Got you. Okay. 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 Cool. Because well, no, because in India, um, a lot, sorry, a lot of my people like the watch here are from India as well. So, uh, I know they a lot of people are used like mobile phones and stuff like that, right? But okay. But is it coming someday? Maybe. Yes. yes. <laughs> it so is. there's okay. Interesting. The next thing we're launching is a web version for people who are not necessarily comfortable installing a browser extension, right? With a lot of people. Especially, you're concerned about your privacy. Got you, guys. People are concerned that their browser extensions are tracking them. We don't, but we understand the concern. So we're gonna have a web version, and we're also gonna have a mobile app that allows you to do this also. Awesome. Okay, I'll shut up. So please, I'd love the demo. Sure. Yeah. So let's say, or, um, yeah. let's see. Let's buy some almond milk. That's like my go-to uh, test product here. <laughs> um, Is almond milk good? You like it? I'm okay. I, I have, I'm like very like particular it. with my coffee and I have like a very specific almond milk that yeah, I like to have. Yeah, try I, like, I'm, I'm a bit of a snob, almond milk snob. Uh, but yeah, so we're just shopping on Walmart nice. like normal. All right. Uh, now say here, you know, maybe you can do me a favor and blur this out at the end. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, actually, we don't have to go too far if there's anything you want to yeah. not share. Oh, wait, you already have your, your thing here. Yeah, my right? address. Your address. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'll I'll take it. I'll take it out. Then. Okay. <laughs> Thank Actually, I know how to blur it out now. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> so, uh, so that's the one downside of a, a financial product. When you do demos, you're showing some some info. Um, but so what you do is you just kind of click your moon icon here. It brings up the sidebar, and you say, okay, well let's let's create a uh, a card here. So I'm just going to put in the exact amount of my purchase. I want a Visa card for sixty sixty three. I have my Coinbase account connected, so I could just say I'll pay with Coinbase, the Bitcoin on my Coinbase account, or what I think is more exciting is paying with the Lightning Network. Of course. You're going to see your conversion rate, how much you're going to pay in Bitcoin. Right? You're just going to confirm this, and then you get a Lightning invoice. right? So what I'll do is I'll scan this uh, with my 
Lightning Wallet. This is, you know, you can scan this with any, any Lightning Wallet that you'd like. And uh, Blue Wallet, what are you using there? Yeah, I, I, I like Blue Wallet, <laughs> so I just scan it with my Blue Wallet. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as soon as that payment goes through, we're good. Okay, but this is just somewhere anywhere where Visa is accepted. Oh, right, because yeah. you essentially bought a. Okay, I got it. It's the, so there, it already. Wait, but did you buy? You bought the card for the exact amount that the purchase is for. Exactly. And did yep. it like auto populate all that type of thing, or it didn't? It didn't auto populate. That's something we're working on. Okay, we right, don't have right. auto populating yet. So, so we do have this where you just copy and paste. Got you. But and then I can complete. I can just complete my purchase now if I wanted to. Insane. Okay, crazy. Okay, so, and by the way, what am I supposed to uh, block out again? Like oh, probably the number oh, and the, your the thing. card number and my address. And your address. Okay, okay, okay. I'll do that. Okay, uh, well, that was insane. Okay, we'll just maybe go back to the normal. That was, thank you for that. Uh, yeah. That nope. is, that is, that's good. So, well, congrats. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, what's crazy about that, I want to point out a few things here. One yeah. is there were no fees to do the conversion here. There were no we fees. We don't charge. You don't charge. Okay. We don't charge the consumer any fees. Okay. You can convert from Bitcoin $2 on this card to make a payment. We don't charge you any fees. Right. So that's the first thing. Okay. The second thing is using these cards. These are one-time prepaid cards. This is the most private way you can make a payment right now. Right. Because you put, say, that, say you put this on some website, you know, mom and pop shop that has, um, that they're selling tomato sauce, right? You don't trust mm. their back end system. You have no idea if they're stealing your credit card or something, if their website's been hacked. Yeah, yeah. You put in a card like this, totally fine, right? The other thing is we, we're, we're very careful with the information that we collect. So in order to create an account with Moon, there's no application, right? You input your name, an email address, and a password, and that's it. So now you can make your purchases very privately very securely and without having to pay any fees. Yeah. Wow. We could just, we could just pretty much wrap up there. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Uh, but that, that's amazing. That's like, I'm, I don't really get, uh, yeah, I don't really get speechless all that often, but uh, okay. That that's pretty sick. I, I'm so happy. That's amazing. And you're saying anybody can no us right now, us, US. but it's yeah. what, when is the world gonna someday get it in the few next uh, few years it's months tricky. it's tricky right tricky, so i mean right yeah it took, it took a long time to mm. get the right financial partners canada in. canada canada maybe canada is possible you know i've talked to some, some banks in canada so we'll see what happens you know but it you know you need it the, the the hardest thing about this is not necessarily the technology i can i feel like i can build anything you know what i'm saying mm. the hardest thing about this is finding the financial partners because what we're doing is connecting the decentralized finance world with the centralized finance world, which I think is, is one of the most difficult things you could do. But I think that's where you capture the most value potentially because it's hard. You know, most people don't do this, right? If you are, uh, you know, a kid in your basement and you can build on Bitcoin, that's fantastic. Uh, or if you're a traditional finance guy and you have all your connections on Wall Street and you want to build some financial product, that's fantastic. What, what happens when you want to merge those two worlds together? And I think that's where things are really exciting uh, to, to build. Um, well, how did you crack that nut? I mean, like, that's kind of the theme, right? Is to encourage people to do that. But like sure. how, I mean, you don't have to give away the secret, but yeah. like any, any pointers, like if people are trying to you I, know, <laughs> think about these kind of sure. complex problems, like how do they even approach it? Cause it is, it's a little bit of like a do not compute, like what, like these are sure, two sure. very different worlds, like oil and water here. Right. So yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So curious so, how you went about that. So it's a little bit, you know, there's the side of the, permissionless network of Bitcoin. And then there's mm. the permissioned side of yeah. the normal financial world. And you need permission to do these things, mm. right? So you need to find the right partner. So for example, for us working with Visa, you know, they're making a big push into crypto right now. Mm. So this aligned very much with the type of things that they wanted to see. Interesting. Uh, and then on the other hand, you know, finding the right bank partner, that was probably even more challenging. I think I've spoken with every bank in the United States that is slightly involved with crypto. So, um, you know, it was, it's, it took an enormous amount of time to find the right people who would, um, you know, back us to build something like this. 
and you know, and then continuously for our for the rest of our product roadmap. Hmm. And so a lot of it is that relationship management saying, hey, wait a second, you know, these financial institutions are very concerned when it comes to security, they're concerned when it comes to money laundering and illegal activity. So being able to say, hey, you know, this crypto thing is not that sketchy. You know, this, you know, we're not facilitating money laundering. We're not doing any, there's no illegal activity here, right? Um, but if there's no KYC, how do you know? Meaning, I, I mean, if they wanted to be or whatever, difficult about it, right? Like, yeah, no, yeah. So, you don't know who you're dealing with. So oh, maybe there are bad guys doing this or something, buying with yeah. it. So it's a matter of reducing risk, right? Because people use traditional banks and cash for illegal transactions all the time. Yeah, people yeah. are doing sketchy things constantly, right? But what we've done is we've structured our platform to mitigate that risk. So we have transaction limits. It's a thousand dollars per transaction per card, uh, and you can only do up to ten thousand dollars a day and up to ten thousand dollars a month. Which I think for most people doing consumer spending, that's who's spending more than that. You know, mm, mm. that's very reasonable limits. Uh, and those are those fall within the the legal framework that doesn't require us to do this type of diligence. So, you know, I think there's there's a really good balance there. And the selling point is, you know, just because someone uses a product that increases someone's privacy doesn't mean that they're necessarily doing something illegal, right? right. Just like a VPN, yeah. right? Just because I like to use a VPN, I like my privacy. I'm not doing anything illegal though. You know? I, I, yeah, I was, okay, so let's say um, I, I agree. I, I think, yeah, like, you know, people, most people don't want to give away their privacy, et cetera, et cetera. But there does come a point where some people are okay with giving away their privacy. I wonder, might there be in the future some like opt in option where they could mm -hmm. enable, you know, if they wanted to be able to spend more than a thousand dollars? Well, here's who I am, and you know, here's 100%. my source of funds, and yeah, sorry, exactly. mm -hmm. yeah, 100%. Because, you know, we wanted to start with this because we understand how important privacy and security is. And I think that there's gotcha. a huge need and a huge demand for a product like this, but 100%, you know, saying, Hey, if you want to go beyond these limits, you're going to have to go through KYC that's required by law. Mm. And, you know, that's just how it is, right? We want, we are going to obey the law. Everybody should obey the law. Um, and, uh, you know, if people are, comfortable giving up that information, fantastic, right? But we, what we're really trying to do is make sure that uh, while being compliant with the law, we want to kind of do as much as we can to provide that privacy and security to our users, uh, exactly. because that is really, it's, it's a core value in, in, in the Bitcoin community. It's important. Cool. Fascinating. Okay. So I guess um, anything else you want to share in terms of, I guess, like the journey of, uh, of moon and, and I don't know, just anything else, uh, any other, I, I mean, like, I think sure. if I had to put into three categories, it's usually like technology, mm -hmm. legal, and like maybe business or whatever. Like those are kind of the three big categories that, you know, come up when you're thinking about a Bitcoin business, but just curious, any, any, I don't know, maybe like challenges specific that you had to kind of overcome. Like, I mean, just dealing with like, traditional financial um, entities is obviously not easy. And I think a lot of people know that. So that is good on you. But but yeah, any, I don't know, any other tips or whatever for people to hire good lawyers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> lawyers are important. Yes. Lawyers are uh, important. Yeah, very good. Get yourself a good lawyer. Yeah. But I think, you know, building on Bitcoin, you know, if you're just going to build straight up on Bitcoin, you can just hack something away all night at home on your on your laptop and and put something out there. Mm. When you're working with traditional financial institutions, there's a lot of approvals. There's lots of red tape. There's a lot of process and procedure. And I have not gone through so much process and procedure since I was working at Lockheed, where it was like you know working in defense. There's a lot of process and procedure doing stuff for the government. A lot of process and procedure. So you know it takes a level of patience and and takes a level of um, you know, just uh, biz dev skill, I guess, in order to manage these relationships and expectations mm. and coordinate and, and make sure you're dotting your T's and crossing, or rather dotting your I's and crossing your T's, yeah, uh, yeah. you know? So I think that's really important. And I do think that in the short term, you know, working with traditional financial institutions, 
is is the way to go, right? I think in the future, we'll all be living on Bitcoin. But in the short term, we have to work with centralized institutions to build these bridge products, right? Yeah, 100%. Uh, it's, very, it's very important. And yeah. I think some people who are like, you know, screw that. We got to get, you know, we got to be all in on Bitcoin. Like, oh, I, hey, I'm with you. Let's, yeah. let's make it happen, but let's do it smart. Let's do it strategically. Uh, you can't, unfortunately, we can't like completely opt out of, of like the, the rest of the world just yet, you know? Yeah. 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 And by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I, I actually started a company called Unocoin, where like India's first Bitcoin company. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. And uh, we started in December 2013. So we have about mm -hmm. 2 million users and uh, Barry Silbert, Tim Draper, Adam Draper, they're all investors in our company. Um, awesome. So, so when when you are ready to make a move in India, <laughs> give me a ring, um, yeah. uh, or Canada for that matter. Sure. Um, but uh, but yeah, man. So this is fascinating. Um, just to maybe switch gears, then uh, if that was uh, you know all on on the Moon side, that was again. I think people should check it out. And and by the way, you said paywithmoon.com, yeah, right? Go to paywithmoon.com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll probably circle back to that one again at the end, but uh, I just wanted to make sure people got it. So, okay. Um, any, any, so my third kind of big question is, is around, you know, like anything that, okay, so do you have some truth that you hold, which most others in Bitcoin would disagree with you on? So that's like the Peter Thiel kind of, you know, contrarian. Yeah, question. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I'm a big, big fan of Peter Thiel. I got an autographed copy of. Nice. Thiel. Nice. Uh, I've only so. seen YouTube videos. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and read his book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the I, big contrarian. So I think, you know, the big one is I, I see Bitcoin as a medium of exchange, right? And I think at this point, people are saying, hey, that's that's not going to happen anymore. We're past that. The fees are too high, you know, and, and I 100% agree that it's I don't think medium of exchange is going to happen on the base layer, right? But that's why we use Lightning Network. Lightning Network is a great solution for them. So I do think that, you know, Lightning is going to become the layer for uh, consumer payments and medium of exchange. Maybe not even Lightning at layer two, there may be a layer three on top of that, but I do see it will be built on Bitcoin. Is that a 3D printer behind you? Yes, it is. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, yeah, sorry. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> This one, it's pretty cool. It looks really cool when it's moving. Nice, nice. Okay, I got one. It's not that heavy duty. It's it's more for my kids to like make you know toys for their toy house. But yeah. uh, but okay, okay. So um, yeah, I like that. I like that, man. Because I do. I think it's super contrarian. I just oh, I heard it all the time. No one's gonna pay things. It's like, what do you mean? Like, how could they not? Like when you see like stupid gains the way we do. How could you not take a little bit off the table? And 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 come on, these pumps, like pumps, I don't want to call them pumps, but these like cycles, if you will, are somewhat predictable. And then, you know, after you've been in it for a while, you're like, okay, this is probably a good time. I yeah. don't know. I, I I don't see any anything negative about being able to enable people to do this. You know, BitPay, um, um, you know, bit refill, right? These are guys I've I've known about. They they're kind of like industry pioneers, if you will, that have been it's like a different look at, at a similar problem, you know, um, a purse, I think, you know, is another, another example, but wow, what you're doing to me, me it's just like, ugh, it's too good. It's too good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Cause you aligned with, and that's the thing you align with the right people and the right partners sometimes. And like you said, business, like, let like if BD is kind of my, like, that's the thing I do. And, yeah. and the fact that you said that, you know, it's like, you just take the right business development and you get someone like this going and, and it takes the tech and everything else. But yeah, it's sometimes underestimated, right? Sometimes people think it's all just ones and zeros in code, but it's like, uh, you got to deal with people. Um, hey, there's two uh, quick things I wanted to ask you here. Uh, one is AI. Um, I know it's not Bitcoin related, but I like getting Bitcoiners take on AI because I feel like sure. it's relevant and um it's something that, uh, yeah, it's just super interesting for me. So, so sure. curious, and you have a, you know, very interesting background. What, what's your take on it, yeah. both like today from a practical, narrow AI perspective, and then maybe a little bit on the longer term horizon, you know, sure. touching on general AI and some of these more kind of wanky things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So um, thoughts on AI. So, so I think when people think about AI, um, 
a lot of people are thinking about AGI. They're thinking about like a human like artificial intelligence. And I think it's, it's a really interesting idea. Uh, I don't know if we're necessarily ever going to get there. Um, and I have some, I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but AI in the short term is fantastic. You know, we did machine learning AI stuff on sensor data back in the day, I was working on some of that stuff. And so I had some experience building products in the space, but, uh, and I think that's huge. And I think that's huge and every business is gonna have some aspect of their company is, ha is going to leverage AI and machine learning. It's really, it's solving optimization problems, right? It's just smart. And every business is what you're doing is solving problems. And often those are problems of optimization. So 100% uh, generalized AI, I am not entirely convinced that is possible. Uh, so for two reasons, um, one is mathematically, right? So there's a, a theory in computer science, I forget the name of it off the top of my head, but it was something that I believe Alan Turing came up with, which was um, you cannot write a computer program that will uh, generate new math, right? So you can kind of think, right? Okay, in the theory of computer science, why can't somebody write a program that you input axioms, say the axioms of set theory, mm. and program just kind of generates theorems, right? A theorem generating program, right? So in theory, why can't you write a program that has new ideas? And the, the theorem states that you can't actually do that. That's not possible. No one has created a uh, software that can just create and invent new things. And it has been proven that you cannot do that. So given that property, I am not sure that a generalized AI could itself achieve that because it is based on traditional theories of computation, right? So maybe, you know, I don't know how that applies. You know, I studied computer, um, quantum computation. I don't remember any of it. This is a course I took in college, but maybe there's something with quantum computers there that could do something differently. Maybe there's some other way of thinking about it, but I don't necessarily think that layering um, computational units that are all have this constraint necessarily uh, alleviates that larger system from the constraint. Mm. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, to some extent. I, I, I follow you. I mean, have you read Kai Fu Lee's book? Like the, the what is it called? Uh, AI superpowers or something like that. I have anyways, he, he, he was, I think he was at Google and anyways, um, but yeah, no, I, I find it fascinating. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know exactly, but I've been reading, you know, like Raymond Kurzweil's work for like, you know, a long time. And I, I just, um, yeah, yeah. I just, I, I like thinking about it. Cause I don't know if you've played with open AI, have you? No, I have not. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's pretty interesting. Okay. Like you can just like, like, I don't know, sign up or whatever, and they give you access. Uh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, okay. And then, and then, and then, you know, there's another last kind of final topic um, that, that I have been talking about less and less, mainly because my viewpoints changed over the last few months, believe it or not, um, is, is around Ubi this notion of like universal basic income, right? And sure, I feel like sure. it kind of relates to like, even let's say we don't get a general AI, right? Like my Tesla literally drives itself. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people that drive for a living and that's just yeah, like yeah. one thing and, and more and more things are being automated. And so sure. I do sometimes think like, uh, and, and then I think if you didn't even need another reason, um, you know, what's happened over the last year is maybe an example or a reason for it, but I don't know, Bitcoiners and especially Max Kaiser has kind of convinced me that that's like a bit of a, a broke idea and maybe it should be like universal Bitcoin millionaires or something. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Sure. But, but curious, what are your thoughts on on this yeah. topic that I think is kind of relevant now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think it's super interesting. Like I'm, I'm a big free market kind of guy. So, you know, Milton mm -hmm. Friedman was the guy who first came up with UBI. And I think it's a really interesting concept and we're, we're starting to see. Is that true? I heard that before. Yeah. That is, isn't it? Yep. So what I, so that's a bit of a do not compute or cannot compute sure. type of deal for me as well. Like what, like he's a free market guy. I know mm -hmm. who he is and he came up with Ubi. Like yeah. what's up with that? Well, because, you know, even though he's a free market guy, yeah, there's still a concept that currency is issued by the government. Um, 
because I don't think, you know, back then he didn't live in a world with Bitcoin, right? Right. So, you know, saying, okay, uh, it is a little strange. You wouldn't necessarily expect it, right? Hmm. But this idea that at least, you know, everybody is getting it equally, right? It's not based on income level or anything else. Just everyone's right. getting, you know, X dollars per month. Um, so it is strange. I would not have expected it either given, you know, because it does the, resonate the rest of his material. It, yeah. it, it, the idea of inflating our money system, blah, 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 and giving it to sure. people. And to me, it doesn't make sense. But I do wonder, and this is more like a, you know, like just like a thing that I think about is, is, is that I wonder if someday Bitcoin could have like, you remember Bitcoin faucets <laughs> back in the day? Now with lightning, you yep. never know, right? Maybe sure, Bitcoin sure. faucets make a comeback. Mm -hmm. And I remember back in the day, though they were so big, like people would just like love Bitcoin faucets. But I do wonder, like, if you're just like some poor kid that's about to die or something, right? And you're just able to like somehow figure out a way to like put food, you know what I mean? Like get like a Bitcoin sure. faucet or something. I, I just yeah, feel, yeah. and then maybe Bitcoiners could even like wealthy Bitcoiners could like, and then anyway, so so is, <laughs> do, do, I, I do I think, think that, I think you know, there's, there's a lot think, of room. Am for, I like totally like, I don't know, just like no, I, off to lunch here. <laughs> I think there's something interesting there. There's something interesting there. I don't know what it would necessarily look like, but I think there's a lot of potential, right? Obviously, you know, Right now, how do you how do you make money work mm. uh, to help other people is through nonprofits. There's enormous amount of fraud in nonprofits. Mm. There's a lot of amount of overhead costs, right? I do think that there's opportunity for Bitcoin to enter that space. Mm. You know, say, for example, you know, some kid in their basement could write some some platform, right? It's completely decentralized and where people can put in Bitcoin, maybe use some kind of smart contract thing. And then recipients can apply and receive it. And there's some kind of decentralized voting thing. You know, like there, there's probably yeah, yeah. Some, some I actually want, you, you, you know, eToro, right? Yeah. eToro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So the founder of eToro uh, is this guy named Yanni and he's mm -hmm. like insanely smart. He, he has a, I think like a side project, maybe a main sure. project now called good dollar, huh. which is, I think the closest to something like this, it's on the Ethereum um, network or whatever, but it, it's trying to take a stab at like this idea of universal income, but in a free market, I guess, kind of way. Sure. Anyways, okay, so what, 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 anything, where do you want people to, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you know, do, is it Twitter? Do you write a blog? Like, where do you, is there, and then, you know, could you maybe just yeah. do a bunch of drops in terms of websites where people yeah. can find more about you? Yeah, so absolutely. So you can go to paywithmoon.com. Mm -hmm. You can grab our browser extension. We do send out an email newsletter. You can subscribe to that at the bottom on Twitter, Instagram, pretty much everywhere. It's pay with moon. That's our handle. Beautiful. Uh, you want to follow me directly. It's a K R U craft. Mm -hmm. uh, you can grab me on Twitter and pretty much everywhere. Um, always happy to hear from people. People have ideas, feedback, thoughts, ideas for how we can improve our product and service. You know, I love hearing from people. I always like to put the customer first. I like to hear from the community. So, uh, you know, I welcome people to reach out to me. Amazing, man. This has been just delightful. Uh, yeah, you know, it was a bit of a surprise. Like I said, I think it was uh, one of my friends or one of our common friends that had connected yeah. us and came out of the blue. But wow, I freaking love Bitcoin. <laughs> I mean, that's the coolest thing. You don't even know what's going on, you know, but but you do mm -hmm. now. Okay, so cool. And we will catch up again. Just stick around for like maybe 10 seconds. I'm going to... Sure.